You are now tuned in to Go Time Dolphins with Charlie Touche and Kadeem Simmons, the Miami Dolphins podcast that's for the fans and by the fans. Gotta make them lose their mind when it's your time. And it's your time. Going all out when it's go time. Go, go. I ain't wasting no time. Gotta make them lose their mind when it's your time. Cause it's your time. Lay it on the line when it's go time. Go, go. Don't waste no time. I have to admit, ever since we took an, un, an, un, an unscheduled break, I have kind of missed you. Um, good to kind of, you know, on a regular basis, just catch up, chat, talk dolphins. Um, I see you're in a new city, I guess. But as we've said, at the moment, we're both too busy with work, you know, just living that adult life, I guess. So, Mr. Charlie Touche. No, sorry, not Mr. Charlie Touche. As I now call you, boss man. Boss man. <laughs> How you doing? <laughs> hey, pay you gotta pay the cost to be the boss, man. Um, nah, man, we cooling. Uh, I get to dip my my toe in the water, the football water, from time to time, bro. Like when I'm not on a gig, I, I'm immersed in it. Like I don't want no off season. I just want my dolphins, right? And that was that was that was uh, that was some of the the talk that we had just creating the podcast. Like no off season, we just keep going and. If I'm gonna talk about the Dolphins every day, I might as well record it. So uh, now that I'm super busy, it's not as like I feel like I'm out of touch. Although it's off season and it's slow, it's still like I, I still feel like nah, I, I want more. Um, so it's go time, Dolphins, the Miami Dolphins podcast that goes not only across the pond but across the world. I'm your boy Charlie Touche. I got my co-host Kadeem Simmons with me. It's always for the fans and by the fans. And wanting more, I get a text from Kadeem today. And it's a basically a tweet from shout out to the Go Time Dolphins social media team. Um, some some fan, I think, of the Chiefs or the Cardinals. I'm not sure. He, I think he's a Chief fan. Chiefs fan tweets something about basically the Anquan Bolden and Jalen Waddle comparison. Like he feels like Jalen Waddle's not all that good and he barely surpassed the numbers and he had an extra game to do it in. And then heads up response from the social media, GTD social media team puts him in his place and basically said, Technically, they did it in the same amount of games because Jalen Waddle got hurt and missed the game. But don't let me stop you. Don't let don't let facts get in the way of your post. My bad, basically, bro. And that thing kind of went viral. And yeah, man, I love it, bro. Like, so I haven't been on on Twitter or anything to to, to keep up. So I'm like, dang. Uh, shout out to GTD social media team, man. Yeah, like. My computer is running super slow at the moment, which is why it takes me so long to get tweets up and stuff. But I do want to show the the actual tweet because, yeah, you know, the Go Time Dolphin social media team, fair play. Like, I did not expect it to to do so well. Um, so as I as I kind of get up now very quickly, um, let's do this. Also, I also have the um. I have the tweet, no, the, the set clip I was speaking about the other day where he didn't have, he had what would have opened, he didn't hit him. So I'll show that after. But this is Javid Furman, um, who said he barely hit both in a 17 game season while Anquan Bolden had 1,300 yards in a 16 game season. Waddle isn't as good as everyone thinks he is. The D- GTD account said, Waddle played in 16 games, but don't let facts ruin your point. And as we say this, it's got 33 retweets, 426 likes. I don't know how many comments it has, but like every few minutes, my what my um, Apple Watch just vibrates. Another like, another like, another like. So, bro, yeah. so he turned off his his um, what is it? Replies? You can he, turn off replies. 
your, he, your he, comments, he, um, posts, whatever it is. Yeah, he made his account private so no one could respond to him. Yeah. At one point. And then we were just like, yeah, I hate you Dolphin fans. I can see why Bulls fans hate you. It's like, no, Dolphin fans just don't allow unnecessary Dolphin slander. Like, if you're going to have a go at the Dolphins, get, get it right. But don't lie about Jalen Waddle. Like, that's just not needed. It was some It was some comments. Like, I, I, I wanted to respond to all the comments. You know what I'm saying? There was a comment that said, uh, there will be no Jalen Waddle slander us accepted here. Like, you're right. We're not accepting no Jalen Waddle. Oh, he's not even that good anyway. What? Yeah. With like, oh. Jacoby Brissett as the quarterback for four games. Excellent segue. Excellent segue. Because we discussed this on one of the last episodes. And I was saying how Brissett has Waddle open. He doesn't hit him. And he was talking about, the, you know, and rightfully so. More the protection, like all, you know, did he go through progressions, all of that kind of stuff. So, the wonderful, wonderful king of Finland, who we had on this show not too long ago, he provided the Go Time Dolphins account with the clip. So, let's have a look at this. So, I believe this is against, I think it's the Colts. Um, see, it's see, see the Colts or the Bulls, someone in blue. Shout out, um, shout out, the king of Finland. I think it's the Colts too, because the Colts. Um, I think it's I'm, I'm pretty sure it's the coach because uh, Tua got hurt against the Bills. Yeah, so I guess it, it could it could it could be the Bills, but nah, I, I believe it's the Colts. The blue kind of looked um, what do you call it? Like Billsish as opposed to Coltsish. Nah, but... it's the Colts, bro. Like that's blue and white. There's no red on on them. True. Yeah. Cool. So, so I'm gonna play the clip through once. No. Analysis, no nothing. This just the clip. First watch. What's your thoughts? I already, I, 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 bro, I, 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 I we, we kind of talked about this. I thought already. Yeah, but, but I, if if I remember correctly, you was like he didn't have time, or he may not have had right. time. So here's my thing. Here's my thing. And everyone, everyone goes to a a play when Tua might have had time. Like, oh, that pocket was clean. Like, hold on, bro. You not going to tell me, sit here and tell me that you could sit in a chair that you know is broken, that has failed you before. Like, this chair is broken, but we continue to sit in this chair, and we real careful and real gentle with this chair. But that one time you sit in the chair, you'd be like, man, ain't nothing wrong with this chair. Like, bro, we know that that, that chair has an issue. So you have to be gentle with that chair when you sit in it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. In this case, so it's the same thing. So they're about, oh, what was wrong with the pocket then? Like, nah, there's nothing wrong with the pocket on this particular play. But at the same time, we know there's an issue, so we have to act accordingly. With this play, this is also one of those, I know I have a certain time to get the ball out of my hands. I have to get the ball out of my hands within a certain time. Uh, I'm not going to chance it. Oh, well, we look good right now. I'm going to hold on to a little bit more. And then now you get yelled at because the ball should have been out of your hands. So he, he went through his uh, projections and progressions. If you look, Waddle comes open at the end of the play. He wasn't open early in the play. He he came open at the end of the play when when Jacoby's not even looking on that side of the field no more. It, it, like if all right, the the ball goes to the right side of the field for all the audio listeners. It's the right side of the field on the numbers. Um, Waddle is coming from the top of the screen, the other side of the field, doing a cross. Now, if Jacoby waits a half a second. Waddle probably scores on this touchdown. I ain't even gonna lie. Waddle probably scores, hits him. It's like a Tyreek Hill type of route. Um, but he didn't wait that half a second. And I don't blame him for not waiting that half a second. And then he hit the uh the check now. That's unfortunate, but it is what it is. So I pulled on four seconds, it's an eight second clip. The ball gets out of his yeah. So yeah, it's, it's, it literally is is half a second. I I I, I still believe 100 percent set has time in the pocket to find Waddle. I understand that just because you have time in the pocket right now doesn't mean that he's not worried that someone's going to come out and no one hits him. I totally get that. But to me, it's the kind of thing where if this is two or I'm reacting the same. When you do have a clean pocket, you have to make the most of it. And in this situation, Fissette had a clean pocket because even right now, it's not like there's someone bearing down on him. It's as clean as you're probably going to get a pocket all season by a Dolphin standard, right now, as he's looking, 
you're not going to hit Waddle. Fair enough. It is a split second situ- a split second decision, but to me, it's the difference between a Jacoby Brissett and a Tua. I kind of expect it from Brissett because that's he's- unfair, bro. Because we don't know what the stipulations were in this play. Like the coach could have said, "Hey, if this isn't there, check it down." It doesn't matter who the quarterback is right now, unless you're you're uh, Aaron Rodgers or one of those top top five quarterbacks in the league that you can improvise w- without listening to your coach. Now, a matter of fact, it's not even you don't even got to be top five for that. You got to be like a vet. You got to be elite to do that. Like, nah, I'm not listening, coach. You know what I'm saying? I remember I'll never forget this. Uh, McCarthy was co- uh, was Rodgers' coach, and we're and we're replaying the uh, the clip as we speak. But McCarthy was – we're replaying the Jacoby Brissett clip as we speak. McCarthy was Aaron Rodgers' coach, and McCarthy called a timeout, and Aaron Rodgers didn't even go to the sideline. Like, I'm, I don't have no reason to go over there to talk to you. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know how all the coaches, all the, all the, quarter, all the quarterbacks go to the sideline talk to their coach or quarterback coach or OC or whatever. McCarthy calls the play. So this was the, the last year Aaron Rodgers was like, man, I'm not going over there. But anyway, with this – this we have no idea. This could have been an A. And, and there's rumors that there were one read plays. Remember that? Like, oh, oh the, yeah, yeah. The, one the OC's calling one read plays. So the read wasn't there and he checked it down as as he was supposed to. So now we got Kadeem Simmons of the world messing with this man. Like, oh, if that was a different quarterback, he would have hit that person that was open. And we no, that's unfair, bro. It's like, unfair. Like, like I said, I I understand and respect your point in that. And given what we know about the offense now, the read literally might have been, unless what was open straight away, check it down. And even that's a two-read play. So it literally might have been, check down. That's the read. Um, I've kind of paused it as it best I, I I was about to say this again, because it looks like, I, I don't think, uh, Waddle's not primary at all. He's not the primary. No, it's, no. It's, 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 it's whoever this is right here on the bottom of the 50. I, that's yeah. the primary target. And it looks like he could have hit him early, but, can can we play it again? Yes. Yeah, so, so the reason I pulled it here is because he's basically about to throw it for the check down. Right. What is what is open? The guy on the streak is open. He goes for the check down. Fair enough. But then it also looked like the guy who's by the fifty on the on the right hand side of the, right hand side of the on field hasn't completed his route yet. It's like he's about to turn up and kind of get in behind these two safeties. Waddle is like Waddle leads his guy. There's no and this is what. I want to see next season where the guy's wide open, find him. What will beat his guy now? Like you, you can fit into that window in hey, my opinion. All right. So here's my, here's my analysis. Now that I've seen this now, and you replayed it so many times, this one is max protection. There are only three routes on this play for everyone listening to the audio version. And then if you if you're watching it, there are only three routes on this play. There's the running back that has a check down. There's Waddle coming across the top, and then there's we'll call it. It looks like Devontae Parker, maybe. I don't know who that is. It's, I, it's, I, I, it's, probably, it's probably Parker given who Parker, Parker at the bottom. Now, if you look at it, it looks play it again. It looks like who is this in in the let's play it again. From the from yeah. the beginning, from the beginning. This is just a clear out route, bro. Like as I'm looking at this play now, it looks like the play is just to be a check down. Like, hey, this is just good. We're just gonna check it down here. Like, it looks like the coaches said, "Man, we're just gonna we're just gonna get positive yards. We're just gonna check it down here on first freaking down." But I think that's that's crazy. To me. Hold on, hold on. I'm not done. Okay, I'm not okay. done with my analysis. If you look, Jacoby Brissett goes to his first read. There's only one read on this play because there's only three routes. A read, a check down is not a read. A check down is an outlet. So there's only two routes on this play. He looked at who we believe is Devontae Parker. It was not there early, and he checked it down right away. One, that had to be what the play was. Look, we're not we're not holding on to this ball. Two, the way Parker's running this route, it doesn't even look like he anticipated the ball, like he was just clearing it out anyway. So three, that tells me there's a chance that this play was going to go to the running back the whole time, regardless of if Waddle was open from the beginning. Do, do you not think if 
I'm, I'm not disagreeing with you. Mm -hmm. If that was the case, why does the set even... To me, it seemed like he looks at Waddle and, let's say, Parker. Like, yeah. You guys are on open. I'm going to check it down. As opposed yeah. to kind, kind of like it's a play action. I'm hitting the... Because, again, if he hits the running back early enough, mm -hmm. the running back can turn up field and maybe get more yards. I yeah. feel like he, I feel like he's waited... So, so, to me, the read is Waddle because everything's cleared out for Waddle and he's gone, do you know what? I don't, don't trust that. And I've checked it down. Because by the time he checks it down... The the Colts are like no like we've got this so I'll, I'll, I'll play it for you three more times then we'll kind of yeah, like nah bro the read is not Waddle though and, <laughs> and to answer your question why he why he waits so long he has to let it develop and he has to hold the linebackers if he just comes out and just throws it down he has to look everybody off you know what I'm saying the first place you look as a quarterback is not where the ball is going that's oh, yeah, of course, one hundred percent yeah. so he had to, he had to look everybody off. I mean, I don't like it. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. I don't like it. I'm just saying it's unfair for us to judge Jacoby Brissett on this or any quarterback because there's only two routes on this play. The OCs are trash, and now the quarterback got to get 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 crap for the OC. That's that's unfair. Like this is the, this is you should be calling out the OCs right now for this, not was, Jacoby Brissett. I was, I was only going to say as well. I'm, I'm not just saying this after you said that. Again, given what we know, it, the the read probably was the running back. And at that point, it's like you guys doing a really bad job because you've like, what does it say about the way you've built this system in that you max protect and your first read and only read is doing the running back? Max like, protection too. Like, how do you how do you say okay? Like again, normally it's max protect. We're gonna try and hit something downfield, and it's like sure. we're gonna max protect, and this is what you got. Nah, that's but again, thanks for King of Finland for Shut up. for having this tweet again, and you know. Again, this is the kind of thing I enjoy, just talking plays with you and kind of going from there. Um, So when I messaged you about, and again, we don't script our shows. We don't do anything like that. Um, But there were a few things which I had seen over the past few days. And I'm like, you know what? Let's talk about that. The first was the Madden ratings, which are coming out day by day. Um, I'm pretty sure as you watch this, as it comes out, they will have announced the quarterback ratings. So you, everyone's going to know what where they rated to are. Um, so do you want to do Madden ratings or the other topic first? Or it does not matter? I mean, Madden ratings are cool. Like, cool. I think, um, uh, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, so I'm looking on a website, funny enough, called maddenratings.com. Got the Dolphins at the moment. Um... Thursday, they announced the um cornerback ratings. Actually, let's start. With, let's start with the cornerback ratings because that got a lot of buzz on social media. Um, as I get the graphics up, who do you think the number one? I know, I know, I know you don't play Madden too much. Um, who do you think the number one cornerback in the game is at the moment? In Madden or in real life? In Madden, Madden twenty three. To Jalen Ramsey. Yeah. So he got a, I believe it's 89, um, 89 rating. No, no, 98 rating. Sorry. My mind right, bro. Yeah, literally. Um, is, is it, hey, I, I know it's, it's hot in London for the first time ever. It's like, actually cold again. Um, it, it's cold already? Not, not cold, but like. But it cooled back down. Yeah, we're expecting rain. Um, like, listen, man. I, so you're not the only person from London, I know. Sorry to bust your bubble, bro. But I miss you too, though, by the way. You know what I'm saying? I, I miss you, though. <laughs> but, yeah, so people out there like, man, it's scorching out here. I'm like, bro, scorching? 89 degrees Fahrenheit, 29 degrees Celsius is not scorching. We know. We, we got up to 40. 40 uh, degrees. That's, that's, a, that's a bit toasty. It, it, it was it's the hot, hottest recorded day in the history of, of, of the UK. That's it's that's a bit that. that's a bit toasty, but yeah, man, y'all was y'all was acting like y'all ain't know how to act, man. Take off your shirt, go for a walk, man. <laughs> like like go enjoy the sun. No one's my my, my gym body ain't finished yet. No one's trying to see that right now. Hey, it's it's not about if it's finished or not, man. We can't wait till the end result. We gotta we gotta it's joy on the journey, Kadeem. Yeah. So this is the Madden ratings as they were released. Just 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 cornerback. They've got they've done others. 
But you said Jaden Ramsey, number one. Yep, yeah, fair enough. So as I go through, is he number two? Jay Alexander for the Packers, 94. Okay, cool. Jadavis White, 93 for the Bills. I'm thinking, I'm surely going to see X at some point because X is kind of up there with these guys. I know you're not the biggest fan of Xavier Howard, but he's going to be around here somewhere. Darius Slay, and I'm like, I, I, I wouldn't put him there, but it is what it is. Denzel Ward, 92. Marshawn Lattimore, 91. Stephon Gilmore, 90. I Stephon, don't know. Stephon Gilmore hanging around, ain't he? <laughs> how, how is Stephon Gilmore at 90? No idea. So Stephon Gilmore's 90. JC Jackson's 90. Marlon Humphrey's 90. And that's what, five, six, that's nine, I believe. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, that's nine. AJ Terrell of the Falcons comes in at number 10 at 89. Oh, now, no Xavier Howard. I know we kind of disagree about exit talent, all, kind of, all that kind of stuff. Surely he's a top 10 quarterback in the league. But according to Madden, no. Top 10. Ken- Madden has him at 12, tied with Kendall Fuller. And just below him is Byron Jones at 87. Sound about so- right to me. Well, you- not top. All right, look, look. Not not as far as the top 10. Xavier Howard is a top 10 corner. By- Byron Jones being in the same neighborhood as Xavier Howard is what sounds right to me. But yeah. if you ask Dolphin Twitter, they'll be like, why do we have Byron Jones? We have Byron Jones so we don't get torched. That's why. Like, Byron Jones gives up way less yards than what Xavier Howard does. Facts. Machine. Straight up. Nope. Like, go ahead. I'm going to say what's interesting is that in terms of man coverage rankings, X is in there. I don't think he's in the top. He shouldn't be, though. But he, and he's not in the top 10 in the zone. And again, that's the interesting thing about Xavier Harris. I think it's something we both agree on. He's not locked down. He just... He's a playmaker. He, yeah. So it's a, it's a whole thing of X. I'm sorry, it's, it's very much... You keep on testing him and he's eventually going to get you. Eventually. It's not you testing once and like it's coming straight back. It's you can get yards on X, but you go to that world one too many times and it's going to get returned, you know, for at least five, ten yards. X is X is a zone, a great z- zone corner. He's not a he's not a, a man to man, put him on the island, trust the game on the line with X. If you trust an Xavier Howard with the game on the line on the island, I'm I don't like it. I'm I'm gonna I'm be real with you. I don't like it. Uh, I honestly would trust Byron Jones on the island more than I trust Xavier Howard on the island. Yeah, I, I get that. Um, before we go to the rest of the Dolphins team, I'm gonna show you the top ten safeties as well, because again, that had some had Dolphin Twitter go in. Something's not right there, which kind of gives away, you know, who's on that list and who isn't on that list. But the, and I will enlarge this as well. I didn't see the point of doing a rundown. Um, but the top 10 safeties, according to Madden, has Honey Badger, Tyron Matthew at number one, Derwin James at number two. Oh, we can stop right there. We can stop. Tyron Matthews is not the best safety in the league, bro. No, not at all. This He's is a not. video game. Like Tyron Matthew is not a 94 in real life. They got him ranked at 94. He's not a 94. Tyron Matthews in real life is like an 85 right now in real life. He's not a 94. But go ahead. My bad. Um, no, no. It's just you go through this list and everyone's like, how can you have no Javon Holland on this? Like Javon Holland, he's rookie year. Like to me, Justin Simmons, Micah Hyde, you know, like Buddha Baker, they're, they're elite safeties. And I'm pretty sure if you then kind of cut it down to three safeties or strong safeties, Javon Holland easily makes one of those lists, you know. But when they kind of bunch the safeties together, which is kind of what Madden does in terms of you can have a free safety, which is a strong safety, and the chain, the play doesn't change. Um, But for me, to not have Javon Holland on this list, even after his rookie year, is a bit disingenuous. But again, it's Madden... If Holland has another year like he did this year, he's probably going to be a top five safety on Madden. 
for for everyone listening on audio version, the list is Tyron Matthews one, Derwin James, Buda Baker, Kevin Beard, uh, Micah Hyde, Dustin Simmons, Jesse Bates, Jordan Poyer, Harrison Smith, Jamal Adams. I love me some Harrison Smith. Um, I'm gonna be real with you. Y'all not gonna like this. Mika Fitzpatrick supposed to be in this. Oh yeah, him as well. You know what I'm saying? Like this is this is foolishness. Um, Javon Holland, friend of the podcast, is supposed to be on this list. And to be real, I remember this, this was a couple weeks ago. I even brought it up on the podcast. Like three weeks ago, someone said the Miami Dolphins should trade for Jesse Bates. They need safety help. I'm like, what? We need safety help. Safety is, is like the strength of our football team right now on everything. Like, if you can – well, all right, let me stop. We, we we fixed up the receiving core. It's just I'm not used to saying that right now. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm not used to – all right, I'm not used to saying the strength of the team is the receivers. I'm not used to saying that. It sounds good, though. It feels good, too. I ain't going to lie. But safety is, is one of our most secure positions right now. And I cannot wait for a friend of the podcast duo, Javon Holland and Brandon Jones, snap and get put on the map and everybody says dang they they clay and curry back there they are they're a whole new we didn't see this type thing going and I, i'm cool with that it's gonna be a very fun season i can't wait to break everything down over training camp and stuff like that um instead of breaking down the rest of the positions i'll just show you what the dolphins players that have been released and where they stand in terms of their ratings um Tyreek Hill is a 9-7 overall. I think he's like the second or third best wide receiver. I believe it's um Devontae Adams at one. I can't remember he's not number two, but Hill's definitely up there. Teron Armstead rated 94. We know he's David Howard rated 89. Mike Gesicki's rated 86. Jaina Waddle's rated 84. Melvin Ingram on um, summer edition, 84. Manuel Ogba, 83. Javon Holland, friend of the podcast, 83. Eric Rowe being, a, being 80 kind of surprised me. Like, that's a good number. No, Eric that's, you, you, you the one who was tripping on Eric we, we might have to trade Eric Rowe. I told you we need Eric Rowe, bro. If we if you get rid of Eric Rowe, then you only have the Jones and Holland, bro. Like, Eric Rowe's legit. He's a legit I, safety. Sure. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm, again, I'm not getting into it. Um, Chase Edmond, 79. 79. Jerome Baker, 79, where he most at 79. And I believe most is the fastest running back in the game at 97 speed. Um, Sony Michelle is 77. Um, there's just a few more kind of the interesting ones, I guess. Jalen Phillips at 76. Friend of the podcast, Mars Gaskin at 74. Friend of the podcast, Brandon Jones at 72. Um... Shannon Tindall is a 68, but he's very, very quick as well. Um, bro, the disrespect for a friend of the podcast, Brandon Jones, bro. The disrespect. What they got him at? 70? 72. 72, bro. Like, put some respect on my dog name, bro. 72, Craig? Come it's on, one of those things where it's like, because, because and, and again, you look at the way they rank their safeties and who's number one. It's very much a case of it's, it's name value. Having Brandon Jones any higher doesn't represent name value for them, which is why you've got, you know, Honey Badger at 95. It's like, if you watch Honey Badger play over the past past year, it's not, not, he's, not, he's, not he's not the best safety in the league. But it's no fun to have him any any lower. So that's, that's why he's there. Um... Yeah, it's Lynn Bowden Jr. is better than the 72. The, the the fact that they've got Brandon Jones um at 72, Lynn Bowden Jr. at 70, and can't stay healthy Preston Williams at 72, it's just like well, that just makes no sense. Like Preston Williams, he's talented, but he can't stay in the field. I don't know why he's rated so highly. Um Cedric Wilson at 75. Yeah, I can yeah. So yeah, but that's that's the ma- ma- things we got at the moment. And to be fair, the thing that says everything about Madden is Blake Ferguson, 
Dolphins long snapper is rated 29 on Madden, but he's listed as a tight end. He's not a tight end, but Madden has every single long snapper as a tight end. So within 2023, and the only licensed football game still doesn't have long snapper as a position. We told you everything you need to know about the state of Madden, Madden at the moment and why I'm not getting it this year. Dang, shot spike. Dang, you took a shot at Madden. There goes our endorsement. <laughs> dang boy not that they will ever consider go time dolphins but dang they will yeah, that's not that's not that's not the building boy um listen man you want you want to talk about uh the ring of honor i no, you know where i didn't realize there's been any updates like i've been that out of the loop i guess as well um so come on Talk to me. So we were talking about Miami Dolphin players who should have their number retired. And I could be wrong, but I think the Miami Dolphins have the fewest numbers retired in the NFL. Um, There's three. And we're not going to say what three yet, but everyone listening to the podcast – if you could think of the three Miami Dolphin players that have their jersey numbers retired, what three players are there? Are they? Just a little brief intermission, and we're back. So three Dolphin players have their jersey numbers retired. All right, you had time to think about it. Now before, let's give it. before you get into it, the Dolphins aren't the team with the least. It's the Beng- the Bengals are the team with the least. They have one jersey retired. Well, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. The Bengals ain't never had nobody. So that's there's a difference. Like, there's a why. Why they don't have no jersey numbers retired. I'm talking about any team with, all right, you should have some players retired. But I I, I guess because it's like almost like Jacksonville. Who, whose jersey number they're going to retire? Like, Baselli, you know what I'm saying? Fred Taylor. Like, I mean, I don't even consider the, some of these people real franchises, if I'm being honest with you. But even, like, the Steelers only have two. Right, yeah. So now that's different. Now yes. I, I, I'm I'm game for that. I'm here for that. So again, I know they're one of the fewest, one of the organizations with the fewest jersey numbers retired. Um, and it's almost like a NASCAR thing. Like, how come Dale Earnhardt number ain't retired? You know what I'm saying? How come Richard Petty number ain't retired? So I kind of like the fact that there's sports that they, you know, we're not doing retired numbers. We we want to keep them in our sport forever. That's kind of cool. I kind of like it. And I guess you can I kind of understand it if you if your franchise wanted to do that. I don't I don't agree with it. I think you got to hang them up like, nah, we need to unlock some numbers like they just now, you know, receivers and running backs could wear single digits and stuff. We need to unlock more numbers. That's what we really need to do. Where that double zero at? Where that zero? at? You know what I'm saying? Rashad Bateman wore zero in college. I like it. So the Dolphins have three players that, that have their numbers retired and we'll get into it. One is the GOAT, Dan Marino, 13. Everyone knows that. I'm not I'm not on board with coming with, with new kids on the block coming out like, oh, can I wear your number? Oh, I got approved by Marino. Nah, I'm not nah. Get your own legacy. You know what I'm saying? So um Dan Marino got his number retired. Greasy Bob has his number retired, number 12. And uh Larry Zonka has his number retired, number 39. Those are the only three numbers retired in, in Miami Dolphins allure in, in the ring honor. Um Kadeem, so, go ahead. You see how so, you won't let me like like be the like how we, we we can't give and go like a co-host. Like I was just about to bring you in and you just wanted to just jump in. Like you see, you know what I'm saying? Like I was literally, I was just going to say for all the marbles, could you tell me the year the dolphins retired those numbers? Absolutely. All the marbles? All the Can marbles. I tell you the years? No, nah, I can't tell you. So I'm not getting all the marbles. <laughs> I'm not getting all that's a tough bro. That's a I ain't gonna lie. There's I don't there's now people gonna look it up, but there's nobody, there's no dolphin fan. I was like, oh yeah, we retired Marino's jersey number in 2006. Like no one's gonna remember that, bro. Like, oh, we retired Zonka's number in 87. All right, bro, you acting right now, bro. It was 86. <laughs> nah, two thousand and two. <laughs> See, like you acting, dog. Like you tripping, man. Kadeem, man, 
what Dolphin players, or give me one Dolphin player that you think his jersey number should be retired? Can I be controversial and say no one? Sure, yeah, absolutely. So, see, see, so yeah. So, again, a bit of background, peek behind the curtain. I read an article and it basically says, should the Dolphins retire on 99.54? And somebody even said Ricky Williams. And I was like, okay, let's, let's, let's slow down. If, if there's any two that are going to be in discussion, it's going to be 99, which I'm wearing today, um, a vintage Dolphin jersey, 99. And the other one is 54, which I've got over there behind me. Um, now, as a newish Dolphins fan, I, I never saw either play live. But I know the history. You know, I know how good hey, they you were. Know, I'm going to need you to stop saying new Dolphin fan, bro. You're not a new Dolphin fan, bro. Seven years is not new. That's not new. I've always said newish. No, nah, but I don't like new ish either, bro. Because then they make it sound like, oh, he's just he's just a new Dolphin fan. Like now, if you say as a a London Dolphin fan or an England Dolphin fan or an English Dolphin fan, I don't know how you British. You know what I'm saying? There's a whole bunch of things you could go with, but newish ain't ain't it? We not doing that. So you have some outlets that available that are available to you for you to use. We're not going with newish. So pick another one, Holmes. Um, as a can I say troubled Dolphins fan because I feel like all Dolphins fans, I guess, have been troubled. That's at fine. Some point. We can all um, relate to that. Yeah, so as a troubled Dolphins fan who lives across the pond, um, yeah, I never saw Taylor or um, Zach Thomas play, but again, you know, I've done my homework, I know how good they were. In saying that, I don't think the Dolphins should retire either of their numbers. Um, and I know some people that be like, oh, how dare you say that? You clearly showed you didn't watch them play. But I'm just like, nah. Um, they're both again, they're both dolphins great. Um, but maybe just because of what they I guess didn't achieve, you know, in the playoffs and stuff like that. And again, Marino never won a ring, but Marino is probably the greatest callback to never win a ring. Like, I don't think anyone can argue with that. Um so yeah, I I personally don't believe that 99 or 54 should be retired. In saying that, do I think anyone should be wearing 99 or 54? <laughs> 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 uh, I kind of don't. I kind of don't think so. What's well, going on here? How you, how do you, how does that work? You don't think it should be retired, but I don't think no one should wear it right now. Like you know, it's it's, it's one of them things where. I can't explain it. Had, had Jalen Phillips taken 99, I wouldn't have been like, dude, what are you doing? I'd be like, it's bold. Like, it's bold. And again, like what you said, create your own legacy. But I think there's a difference between having having the boldness to, to say, do you know what? I can continue the legacy of this number. Whereas, you know, you can't continue the legacy of Marino. Like, that's just impossible. And again, I remember when two was coming out of college and everyone was like, he wore, he, you know, he wore 13 at Alabama. And people were like, you know, I'm retired 13 and give it to, to two. And it's just like, dude, don't you dare do that. But y'all know how much I love Tua. That ain't, could, I was I was not going for that. You better you pick imagine, another number, Holmes. Could you imagine if Tua wore 13 and had the first two years that he's had? Could, like, yeah. So, I know I kind of contradicted myself. Um, but yeah, it's I, I not, It's not new here on GTD, Kadeem. And that's fine. But yeah, I'd, I I don't think 99 and 54 should be retired. How about or you? Or worn either. So go figure. I said, how about you? <laughs> All right. Um, I'm okay. I'm okay if, if they're not retired. I'm okay if 99 and 54 are not retired. But my answer is they both should be retired. 99 should be retired. Uh, Jason Taylor is Jason Taylor. When you see Dan Marino in the Ring of Honor, Larry Zonka in the Ring of Honor, Bob Greasy in the Ring of Honor, if someone sees Zach Thomas in the Ring of Honor, they're not going to say, why is he up there? No one is saying that. 
No one's going to say, why is Jason Taylor in the ring of honor? No one's saying that either. And I want to be fair. The ring of honor and having numbers retired are not the same thing. Because I believe there are people in the ring of honor that don't have their numbers retired. If I remember correctly, I could be completely wrong, but I think that's accurate. I think there are more people in the ring of honor, but only three numbers are retired. So, matter of fact, I think Jason Taylor and Zach Thomas are already in the ring of honor. So, maybe I need to rephrase what I'm saying. What I'm saying is, I do think they should be retired. So, I, I do think 99 and 54 should be retired. I'm okay if, if they choose not to. I'm okay if this San Fran, San Fran pick is a top five pick next year. And then there was a Chase Young type of person that came out and we tacked, we snatched them at two and he wanted to wear 99. I'm not tripping. I'm not, I'm really not going to trip. I don't love it, but I'm not going to trip. I like tradition and we probably could have had one of them realignment uh, episodes right around now with everything that's going on in college football, how there is actually a realignment going on. So we'll revisit that next year for sure. Because I think the NFL really needs to see it right now and and, and get up with the times. But I, I'm I, I like tradition. And someone said, Oh, Cam Wake. And that's my thing. Once you start talking about the Cam Wakes, then you could get into well, if Cam Wake at Jersey could have been retired at 91 with 91, I could see why um Duper and Clayton could have had their numbers re retired. You know what I'm saying? And I know, I know. Uh, you are England. You're a British Dolphin fan. English. Which one you prefer? English. English Dolphin fan. You know what I'm saying? But Duper and Clayton, I, I rock with them boys heavy. Maybe they shouldn't have their numbers retired, but Jim Kick. I like Jim Kick, and I could be wrong. Maybe he shouldn't have his number retired either, and I'm, I'm okay with that as well. Um, who else I got? I got some linemen. There's some linemen that 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 could have could have had some some that had their numbers retired. But yeah, man. But you got something else before we go into bonus time? Well, just so, so as you were talking there, I was like, I had a kind of a puzzled face. According to Wikipedia, the Dolphins retired 954. I know for a fact they did not do that. Like the Dolphins haven't retired 954. So that's what I'm saying. I think it's the the Ring of Honor conversation that that. If you if you Google ring dolphins ring of honor, see what so, comes up. So that's what I'm looking at. So I'm looking. So I'm, I'm on Wikipedia, Miami Dolphins honor roll, which is you know the ring of honor. Um, and it's got you know Zonka, Greasy, Jim mm -hmm. Langer, Paul Warfield, Larry mm -hmm. Little, like a whole bunch of guys. I'm like yep. okay, you know, including like Mark Clayton, Mark Duper, Richmond Webb. But as you go down, it's got like a little sign next to Zonka, Greasy, Marino. Taylor and Thomas, and on the bottom it says Joe's number retired, and I'm like, well, no, because 99 and 54, unless we both missed the memo, aren't retired. Maybe they're gonna get retired this year, which, which could be. And which Wikipedia, point, Wikipedia's ahead of the curve. It wouldn't be the first time, I guess. You know, Jason Taylor and Zach Thomas both edited their Wikipedia page to say numbers being retired, but. But yeah, in overall, no. I don't have anything else to add before we head into bonus time. Hey, y'all come on over to bonus time and rock with us. Y'all know what time it is. Stay positive, test negative. For Kadeem Simmons, I'm Charlie Touche. Thank you for tuning in this time. Make sure you catch us next time on Go Time. All right. They make them lose their mind when it's your time. And it's your time. Going all out when it's go time. Go, go. I ain't wasting no time. Gotta make them lose their mind when it's show time. Cause it's your time. Lay it on the line when it's go time. Go, go, don't waste no time. Gotta make them lose their mind when it's your time. And it's show time. Going all out when it's go time. We'll ask you a question in bonus time. Um, just a massive shout out to George Butcher, um, who's currently doing our graphics, our thumbnails. Dope guy. Um, may not have found out myself. English base like myself. If you haven't already, go go on Twitter, drop him a, a follow, you know, tell us that or tell him that you know go time dolphins sent you, show him some love. I'm trying to convert him to a dolphins fan. Um so yeah, oh, the hey, didn't didn't Ronaldo just leave y'all again? No, he's, he's still there, but he wants to leave. Hey, what's up with y'all? What y'all got going on? 
I'm I'm an I'm a Man United fan, and I'm like Cristiano Ronaldo isn't a, he's a Man United legend, but he's been here for he's been there seven years across two spells, and of five of those seven years, he tried to leave the club. Like the guy does not want to play for Man United. He never wanted to play for Man United. Let's be honest. He's always had eyes on bigger projects. Is what it is. So, but yeah, go follow um George Botcher. I believe his Twitter is at created by George. Um, dope guy. You know, really really cool. Um, what do you make of the Kyle Murray contract? Overpaid. That's what I made of it. So it's a long-term contract worth two, five five year, 230, 230 million. I think it has him second behind Aaron Rodgers in terms of the top paid quarterback. And it's just like, no. But, you know, he, he, he got his bread. I can't argue with anyone who gets the money that they feel they deserve. And it can be very, very interesting to see what the Ravens do with Lamar Jackson because Jackson is going to look at that contract and go, this is the starting point, at least. Bro, this is go time Dolphins, but – and this is a team that I, I actually – I hate this team, actually. The New York Giants. I hate the Giants. Um, the Giants said they were going to draft my brother when he was, he was coming out of college, and they were looking at him, all the good stuff, and they had three draft picks, and the, they're like, oh, yeah, we're going to look for you. My, my brother, by the way, went to winston Salem. Winston Salem State University. It's a small college, um, HBCU, and you know it's hard to come out of a small college. So, the Giants had three six-round picks this this year, that year, and they're like, "Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna look at you in the sixth. Like, be ready." So I'm watching the whole draft. Like, I watched the whole draft anyway. You know what I'm saying? So six round comes up, and they take a safety from Ohio, not Ohio State. Ohio, like who comes out of Ohio? You feel me? Like the small college of Ohio. So when they took that safety out of Ohio, since my brother was a DB too, I'm like, dang, like it was, it was like probably the conversation, like some, one of the, one of the scouts says, now nah, we're going this way instead of that way. Right. And, um, so ever, and then the Eli Manning conversation, I'm done. I don't like Eli, you know what I'm saying? So I, I have a, a, a bias against, um, the Giants, but, there's a uh, Make a Wish Foundation with the ESPN, and they do like uh, these little segments that they haven't done in a while because of COVID. And there's a kid that was on the draft uh, this year's draft that announced the the New York Giants' first pick of the draft, which was Kayvon Thibodeau. Y'all have to go and watch this. It's about a maybe five minutes. It's a five minute clip on YouTube. It's it's Sam Prince. Just Google Sam Prince, make a wish, and it will make your day. Like whether you're a football fan, a, a Dolphin fan, or NFL fan, like just just to see people and humans in, interact like like this, man. I I, it, it, I watched it like four times. I didn't even lie to you. Um, I guess to end on this as well, what do you make of the Browns having Josh Rosen in for a look in case Watson gets? Yeah, it's called My Wish. I think it used to be called Make a Wish, but it's My Wish. So, okay. um, yeah, Josh Rosen and um, what's your boy's name? AJ McCarron. It's they're coming into the Browns, and then Cam Newton got a phone call. Cam Newton is grits. He's finished. Uh, AJ McCarron, I, I would have to put some eyes on him, see see what it looks like. So that, that's that's a fair thing to do. Josh Rosen, after after all the kicking around that he did in the league, I think he, he his ego's damaged. I don't think he I don't think he has the fire anymore. You know what I'm saying? Whether I liked him or not when he first came out, there's no way you could have that emotional damage on you, and then go to a team that's expecting to do something well. And then now you're thrown in this situation. You're, you're just going to be a backup behind Jacoby, who maybe Josh Rosen can beat him out. I ain't going to lie to you. But you know what I'm saying? And that's – it is what it is. But, yeah, man. Yeah, I just find it funny that the, the Browns could start 
the season with two former Dolphins quarterbacks on their roster. And yeah. Way to bring it back all together. <laughs>